Today I'm going to show you how to passively invest in rental real estate from another state. Kevin, this is your show. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holt Wise TV. As always, I'm your host, James Wise. And folks... Uh, this is the show on Holton Wise TV. We work together one-on-one, -on -one, right? So if uh, you came here because you Googled like how to invest in real estate out of state, how to become an out-of-state real estate investor, something of that nature, you're in luck. You're in the right place, right? What we do is we work uh, with out-of-state investors. I mean, they could be local as well. Just We work with investors no matter where they live to invest in incredibly uh, profitable turnkey type real estate, right? That's a, a common term you hear in the industry, turnkey real estate. It's you know kind of changed meaning over the years because so many people use it. But essentially, we have like a lot of turnkey markets. Uh, think the Midwest of the United States where people uh, from other states, more expensive states, uh, California, which is where Kevin's from, is one of the most popular ones where you see investors living in expensive places like California and they're investing in these turnkey products and services in these Midwestern markets. And that's exactly what we're doing today, right? Kevin, you uh, have done several videos with us before and uh, the feedback on the last video was, hey man, this is cool, but I want to maybe try to do something a little bit uh, lower risk, right? Because that property was a, a little higher risk. And that's what I found for you, brother. 4781 East 93rd, Garfield Heights 44125. Just hit the market two days ago, okay? Listed at $89,000. Now, Unlike your previous property, which is like DC, uh, this is a B grade asset, okay? Much lower risk neighborhood, right? The, the property looks to be a little newer and in a little bit better shape. It's fully occupied, so I don't have photos of the interior, but that's not something you should be afraid of, shouldn't be nervous about. Even pre COVID, okay? Even pre COVID, it was incredibly difficult or tough for a lot of real estate agents and people to just go in these tenants' homes and, and get these photos. So it's very common that you just see exterior photos. And that's that's quite all right. I'm not nervous about that. What you can see, we got a, just a classic build of a Cleveland area duplex, man. Like this duplex right here, we've literally got hundreds of these duplexes in our portfolio, right? They're all built the exact same way, brother. We have uh, in each of the units, right? There's two beds, one bath, right? You got a kitchen, then you got a dining room, then you got a living room. And then over on this side, you have two bedrooms with your bathroom in the middle. This is like literally the exact same layout. They even have like the same uh, built-in shelving type things in the uh, the living uh, the dining rooms rather right it's like a big bench seat type thing and then in the corners you see like two built-in shelves and then there's always like a fireplace typically capped pretty much all of them have been capped by now in the living room right so we've got hundreds of these assets uh, in our portfolio all built the exact same dude very very simple stuff now what we have is two tenants both tenants are paying 600 a month so 1200 is coming in 14,400 a year is coming in now this particular property listed by an agent uh, out of Stouffer Realty. She's actually the owner as well. 89000 is a very fair price for this asset. Okay, it's very fair. $600, right? That's what the tenants are bringing in. So I broke down the numbers based upon that, right? So 1200 comes in. An average monthly expense goes out of 828 leaving you with a 372 monthly average NOI. Here's the cool thing, though, brother. The uh, market rent for this is much higher. These are definitely $750 units, right? These are no question about it, $750 units, right? Now, what we'd want to do 
is we'd want to probably continue to operate this with the existing tenants in there as much as possible, right? Because if we pick it up at the price point, I want to try to pick it up eighty-five thousand, right? I think this, you know, I think she priced it quite well, right? She priced it at eighty-nine, so we're gonna come in a little bit lower. We're gonna come in try to pick it up at eighty-five, right? If you pay eighty-five versus if you pay eighty-nine, does it matter? No, it's it's the same thing. But you know, usually if they're listed at eighty-nine, odds are good we can try to get a couple grand off, right? So if we pick it up at eighty-five. And we keep our $600 tenants in there. It's a 5-3 cap, and then with traditional financing, it results in a 5.9% cash-on-cash return. However, these are $750 tenants, right? Because I know that doesn't sound super exciting. But number one, remember, we're going super low risk here. This is a B-class neighborhood. Number two, uh, if you add in the additional 300 that we should be getting in rent, which is an additional 4848 a year, that would result... Uh, well, after your, I'm sorry, after your like mortgage and all that jazz, right now you're bringing home 1,248 with uh, the rents where they are. If you add it all in, where you're bringing home the the four eight four eight, the 4,848 is what I'm trying to say, which would include the additional 300 a month uh, going up to market rent. The numbers would pencil out to a much higher cash on cash return. They would pencil out to a 22. 0.8% cash on cash return. So you got to remember that there's meat on the bone. There's uh, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, right? So don't just look at the chart where I give you 5.9 because, again, that's going off of what we currently have, just the 1,200. But I assure you, hundreds of these in my portfolio, these are $750 units, right? But we're not just going to go from $600 to $700 the day you take over. That wouldn't make any sense, okay? We don't want to do that, right? Natural turnover is all we want to deal with. You're going to get natural turnover when you own multifamily properties, right? Natural turnover is when the tenants on their own move on, right? People don't live in your duplex apartment for the rest of their lives, right? You know, just by nature... Rental properties, right? They're going to deal with people that are more transient, right? Because, you know, if they were not that transient, they would just own a property most likely. So eventually these folks will move out. So when they do move out, we're going to have to do a normal unit turnover, right? We don't have photos of the insides of these units. So I'll just assume we're going to drop like 5 6K per unit. Is it possible uh, that they've already like done really brand new kitchens and baths maybe but they didn't say anything about it so very very unlikely right so the fact that we don't even have the interior photos isn't really that big a deal to me because i think it's like a one in a hundred shot that you're not doing at least a five to six thousand dollar turnover repainting everything buffing those hardwoods uh you know sprucing up the kitchens and the baths right we do all that that's how we get our 750 fifty dollar tenants right but because we got to do all that we don't want these 600 hundred dollar tenants to walk away right we want to keep them in there as long as possible we don't want to create artificial turnover let's let the natural turnover tell us when it's time to fork over some extra dough to increase that rental income and get you to that $1,500 a month. Because as it sits today at the $1,200 coming in, it already cash flows, and that's the name of the game. And we'll just let that natural turnover tell us when it's time to reinvest some money into the property. Now, as far as the mechanicals, roof, hot water tank, furnaces, uh, from what I'm gathering, what I'm picking up between what she has said and what she has not said, everything appears to be mid to end of life. Of course, when we make our offer, we're going to make it contingent on a third-party home inspector. He's going to go in there. Now, if he tells us, yo, this roof is totally trashed, you got to replace the roof tomorrow, it's probably like a $7,000 roof. If uh, they go in there and the furnaces, which I presume are working because we've got tenants in there, uh, if those are totally broken, those are 3000 a apiece. Hot water tanks, uh, they're going to be 1000 a apiece. Normally, you get... 15 years out of your hot water tanks, 30 years out of your furnaces, 30 years out of your roofs. I anticipate everything to be mid to end of life. You should not expect them to be brand new, but we should also not be expecting them to be totally destroyed and trashed. If, when we do the inspection, they are totally destroyed and trashed, that is something I can take back to the seller and try to negotiate further discounting, right? But I've baked into the cake of me thinking this is worth 85 k dealing with a roof, 
two furnaces and two hot water tanks all in the mid to end of their natural life cycle. One other thing to note, this agent slash owner has not ordered the city POS yet. She is waiting to do that. If you don't know what the POS is, pause this video, click the show notes below. I got a link down there explaining what the POS is. Now, if you're going to invest in the Cleveland market, you guys need to familiarize yourself with the POS because it's going to come up quite often. In this particular scenario, what I want to do, since she hasn't put all of her cards on the table, we are going to do the only thing we can do is make our offer, which again, we're targeting 85K, contingent on our own third-party home inspection to make sure there's no major issues such as uh, those mechanicals I've been talking about being totally trashed or going in there and finding major structural issues with the foundation of the house, things of that nature, right? We're looking for that stuff. In addition to that, another contingency we're going to make is we're going to make it contingent on her providing you with a clear POS prior to closing. Now, being as this is the owner and the agent, I assume she's familiar with the process, so that shouldn't be too big of a deal. But some sellers get very confused by it, and some buyers get confused by it too. So again, that's why I've made the video. So again, if you didn't pause the video to check that out, you need to, because if you're going to be in this market, guys, one way or the other, you're dealing with POSs, right? You're dealing with it when you're buying, and then you're dealing with it when you're eventually selling, folks. So that's very important. That's in the show notes below. Kevin, let me know if you want to do this deal. You ask for lower risk. I have provided you with some lower risk here. If for whatever reason, though, this still doesn't fit what you want to do, you still want to make adjustments before you make an investment, that's totally cool, brother. It is your money. I'm just here to give you advice uh, and then help you pursue the property you do want to pursue when we lock in on it. So if you want to take this information from me and move forward with the property, reply to the private email. We will do that. We'll try to negotiate everything I've discussed. Uh, or if you want to do another video changing up the criteria, just let us know. Uh, and then I will make the adjustments on your next video. Everybody else, if you watch this and you're an out-of-state investor and you're like, hey, this all seems pretty cool, what about the property management, though? Okay, you're going to tell me about the property. You're going to tell me how to buy it. That's cool, but what do I do after I buy it? Holton Wise is a full-service turnkey service provider, guys, okay? After this closes, we are going to handle all the property management for you. We own an insurance company. We own a farmer's office. We can handle the property insurance. We have stakes in multiple title companies in this region, so we can handle the title insurance. My team does full service construction, repairs, maintenance, landscaping, unclogging toilets, leasing it to the tenants, right? So if you're trying to invest in real estate, we're your one-stop shop. It starts here with the education. So if you want to work with me in the same way, Kevin, as you go to holdenwise.com, click the property search for sale tab, order yourself an MLS search and analysis, or we sell them in packs, three, four, and 10 packs. The bigger the package you get, A, uh, the more discounted it is, and B, it's smarter for you because it takes time to put these deals together, right? We are trying to negotiate with sellers on the open market, trying to get you guys the right prices, right? We're trying to pick them up at profitable prices for you, right? We want to get the right property for the right investor at the right price with the right financing, and I have that too. Sales at HoltonWise.com, if you don't have a lender, Email it, sales at holdenwise.com. Email us, let us know. We'll get you our list of lenders and they can get you financed and then you can come uh, do some videos with me and we'll get you some properties, right? And then after that, we'll set you up on the full property management if that's what you guys want. So don't matter where you live. If you're trying to invest in out-of-state real estate, we got you covered from top to bottom. That's all I've got for today's show, folks. If you're not ready to do any of that, you're just a first-time viewer, do yourself a solid and smash that subscribe button because Holton Wise TV is real estate investing made easy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.